Hello, welcome to another edition of Between Two Owls. I'm your host, Tom Price, and with us today is Dr. Maria Lorenz from the Mathematics Department. Thanks so much for joining us today. My pleasure, Tom. So, where did you grow up, Maria? I grew up in a town called Natick, Massachusetts. It's about 20 miles west of Boston. And as a child, what kind of activities were you involved in? Um, lots of outside play. I was um, a big baseball fan. In fact, I'm still a big Red Sox fan. Mm -hmm. And um, I even, I enjoyed playing baseball. I was, you know, one of the first girls to be on a little league team in my, in my town. Yeah. So, and do you have any siblings? I do. Um, that's a little bit of a complicated question. You wouldn't think so, but um, I grew up in a family of five siblings and um, sad, well, five children. Um, sadly, one of my brothers passed away um, in, in 2006. Um, and though since then I've come to find out that I actually have another brother that I didn't know about. So, um, wow. so yeah, so I'm, I'm back to two brothers, two sisters. And um, were, were you interested in mathematics from a young age? I always enjoyed it, I have to say. Um, I loved working on like little math puzzles. And I remember we had something called the bookmobile that used to come around and you could take mm -hmm. out books. And um, I remember getting little little math puzzle books out and... So it was something that I always enjoyed. It was, it was always my favorite class. And then where did you do your undergraduate work? At a very small state college called North Adams State. And that's in the Berkshire Mountains in the very Northwest hmm. corner of Massachusetts. In fact, it's, it's still there, but it's no longer North Adams State College. It's now called Massachusetts College for the Liberal Arts. So they've and, stepped it up a notch, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and did you have any uh, influential faculty members there? I did actually, yes. I had, um, it was a very small school. Like I think I graduated with maybe six or seven math majors. There were 1200 mm -hmm. students all together. So it was small, you got to know the faculty, but there weren't many either. But um, the chair of the department was someone named Melvin Band. And he was extremely encouraging and influential. Um, you know, when I expressed an interest in going to graduate school, he was very encouraging, but also realistic. He knew that coming from that small school with, um, you know, it was sort of limited in what their offerings were, um, mm -hmm. that I would be, you know, that it would be a challenge for me. And he was realistic about that, but also encouraging, like he, he, said, I, I think you can do it. Just beware, it's gonna be, you know, a lot of work. You're probably gonna be behind a lot of the other students. Mm -hmm. He gave me a couple of books to sort of help prepare me. Um, so he, he was really was actually awesome. an influential, influential person. And so then what happened next? Then I did go to graduate school. Um, I went to the University of Southern California in Los Angeles. So I went from That's small, crazy. homogeneous yeah, wow. state school in <laughs> freezing mountains of Massachusetts to huge, diverse, private university um, in sunny California. <laughs> it was a shock, like in, yeah, in pretty shock. much every way possible, but I was kind of up for the adventure. And um, same thing, did you have any influential faculty members in your graduate work? I did actually, I had, I had quite a few. Um, er, early on, you know, as not, not surprisingly, it was a big struggle for me. I was pretty seriously behind many of the other graduate students in particular. Um, it's, it's not uncommon that many graduate students are international and the, in, the education that they come in with is very different than mm -hmm. um, like the background I had. So for a lot of the classes, it looked to me like, what, what are they talking about? And for these people, it was review, like they had done this as part. So, um, so I was pretty discouraged um, early on, 
One thing that really helped me a lot is I took a couple of undergraduate courses as a graduate student, like one per semester for my first three semesters. And I had a, um, actually it was a number theory professor, Kevin McCurley there. And he was so encouraging to me and um, offered to let me work with him on a master's thesis, which I did on, on a topic called primality testing. And that just his support and the experience of doing that thesis, it really helped to encourage me a lot. And then next, when I decided that, you know, I, I, I think I can maybe really try to hack this and stay in the program, um, the next very influential person was my PhD advisor, um, Susan Montgomery, who um, was just really an incredibly supportive person the whole time. And, help me getting you know when i was on the on the job market and um she's she's remained a supporter strong supporter ever since and and still Very to cool. this day great awesome so let's uh fast forward a little bit so what brought you to temple university well actually my husband who's um also <laughs> a faculty member in the math department hate to admit it but um yeah we so we we had that it's not uncommon in academia to have this two body mm -hmm. problem um i had a job actually at university of pittsburgh and he was here at temple and we were both trying for jobs at the other institution mm -hmm. and anyway it it ended up that I, I'm here at Temple and it's actually worked out very nicely and I've been very happy with the way it, it's all played out. <laughs> awesome. So what do you like most about working at Temple? You know, I, I just love the energy on campus. Um, you know, I guess like almost anyone, there are days when, you know, you get up and you're like, ugh, I don't really feel like going to work today. But once, you know, I get off the train and walk, you know, you step onto campus and it's like, oh, well, if I have to go to work, this is really pretty awesome. You know, just being um, surrounded by young, energetic people like that. And I, I don't know, it, it, it does energize me. And I, I do feel like it's a privilege to be able to, to have this as my, as my job and at Temple in particular. Awesome. And what do you enjoy about teaching Temple students? Um, you know, I do think that Temple students have, um, there, there's not a lot of pretentiousness there, let's mm -hmm. just say mm -hmm. there's sort of an honesty and um, typically a, a good work ethic that I, that I appreciate a lot. You know, people associate Philly with sort of a, a grit factor. And I feel like mm -hmm. students that that choose to come to to Temple, um, they're attracted to to some of that. You know, they want the city campus and urban environment, and um, and I, I just think it shows in their attitude, and I appreciate that. Cool. I want to shift gears a little bit. Um, what do you like to do for fun? For fun, well. I love to cook. Cooking is like something that I, it's sort of relaxing for me and I love to do it. I, I mostly like to cook for other people. So sadly, I haven't been able to invite a lot of, a lot of people over, but um, my husband's been the beneficiary of that for the <laughs> past year. What, do, what um, are your, some of your specialties? I like to cook a lot of ethnic food. So um I don't know. Sometimes I, I I made a Jamaican fish curry the other night. Um, wow! Awesome. I like yeah. I'm also a cookbook fanatic, and my latest obsession is Otto Lange. I don't know if you've ever heard of him, but he's got these amazing cookbooks. Um, he's Israeli, so there's a lot of that sort of cultural recipes there too. Cool. Um, what do you enjoy most in your friends? What do I enjoy? Well. I like to talk to people like I process things through mm -hmm. through talking them through so I really appreciate friends who who can listen and also give give feedback. Um, and I have to confess, I really do like to have fun. <laughs> so I mm -hmm. like people mm -hmm. that that like to, you know, do things that like to get together I I'm energized by being around people so just sort of 
you know, hanging out and spending time with them um, is good for me. What are you currently reading? I'm reading a book. Um, okay, so this is terrible because now all my books are on my iPad. When you don't see the cover all the time, mm. you forget mm. the name. I know it's it's Deacon King Kong by um, hmm. James McBride. It's I think it was one of the Oprah picks fairly That's, recently. Mm. I just started it, so I don't have have a whole lot to say. But I know it's it's set in Brooklyn um, in a housing project and. Um, oh. And and the main guy seems to be this very troubled older older gentleman who's a deacon at the church, which is and his he drinks this horrible concoction that I think has this King Kong nickname, which is I, I guess where the 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 title Deacon King Kong comes from. Do you like to watch any sort of Netflix or Amazon Prime or whatever? Well, I've grown to. <laughs> I used to not watch TV really at all. And um, mm. now during this pandemic, I've, sure. I've started and um, I enjoyed um, Mrs. Maisel. Mm. Mm -hmm. you, do you know that show? And then mm -hmm. um, recently we watched Ted Lasso. That was very, like, actually sort of a very charming um, little series. And right now I'm watching Behind Her Eyes. Oh, I Have saw. I haven't watched it. Yeah, I've heard of it too. It's a little creepy. I'm, I'm a little mm, Not curious sure. to see what's <laughs> going to happen. <laughs> yes. Um, what are you looking forward to post the pandemic environment? I really, I'm actually looking forward to getting back to campus a lot, mm -hmm. and I just really want to see my friends and and my family. Um, I am. I really want to visit my mother a lot. Like that's mm, maybe mm -hmm. top on my list, I would say. So, so um, we're gonna do something called rapid fire response. I'll give you two words. You just state your preference. Tea or coffee? Both. I'm a caffeine addict. <laughs> <laughs> Morning or night? Morning. Dark or milk chocolate? Dark all the way. Offense or defense? I think defense. Dogs or cats? Mm, I would say dogs. Bert or Ernie? Um, <laughs> I don't know. I guess Ernie. I'm, I'm not really sure what I'm picking there, but. <laughs> half full or half empty? Half full. Hot or cold? Hot. Awesome. Thanks so much for being on the show today, Maria. It's been great All right, Tom, it was fun. Thank you. Thank you.